Hi, welcome to another edition of Steam Kids Virtual Classroom. This month we're focusing on flight and we have a special guest with us to help explain flight and how airplanes work. And I'm really excited for this. First, let's thank our sponsors. We want to thank the Union Pacific Heritage uh, Foundation for uh, sponsoring all of our stuff this summer. It's been amazing to have them make our Steam Kids Virtual Classroom possible. We also want to thank Greeley Station for their sponsorship of production for this. So today we're gonna to talk about flight. Why do planes fly? So with us, we have a special guest. This is Captain Kruger. <laughs> How are you today? Very good, thank you. <laughs> awesome. I guess the first thing I wanna ask is, why did you decide to be a pilot? Well, actually it all started when I was young with water skiing, believe it or not. My older brothers built a, what we call a flatbed kite, which is just looks like a normal kite that they would strap themselves to and tow it up behind a boat. That eventually went to what we call regalo, regalo hang gliders, which really got me interested in flying. And so then I went to high, uh, college, uh, learned to fly, got my degree in aerospace engineering, went to the Air Force, spent a couple years as an engineer in the Air Force before the Air Force sent me to pilot training. So I spent 20 years in the Air Force flying the B-52 and the B-1 bomber after I completed training. And now I'm with Southwest Airlines for the last 15 years. So flight is a big part of your life. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> That's wonderful. Can you tell us a little bit more about these planes? We have amazing models here on the table. Okay. Well, this one is a B-52 bomber. This is a particular H model bomber that is still flying today that were built in the 1960s. So these particular H model bombers were built in 61 and 62. So you have an airplane that is 60 year, almost 60 years old, still in service in the United States Air Force. The other one was a B-1 bomber. This one here. Those were built in the 80s and they're still flying today. And what's unique about the B-1 bomber, it was designed as a low level, high speed penetrator. So if you watch in real life, the B-1 bomber's wings swing. So on takeoff, to generate a lot of lift, they're forward. When they're flying low level at very high speeds, almost three football fields a second, the wings sweep back to cut down the drag, and so therefore it can go faster low level. That is really... And this is what Southwest flies and many airlines fly today. This is a Boeing 737-800 version. Okay. And so that's consistent, or that's what I fly today, is the 737. I've flown in a few of those. <laughs> There's a lot of <laughs> them They're really out. nice. There was no. well over 5,000 made. <laughs> no, let's talk scale for a minute. We've, we've talked about scale before in our lessons. And so what scale are these planes? These, I believe, are 1-100 scale. Okay, 1 to 100. And our model trains here are 1 to 87. Seven. So they're slightly different scale, but they look pretty close. They're not yeah. too far off. So that's a little bit of scale. Okay, so today we're going to talk about what makes them fly. Do you want to explain that a little bit? Well, that, <laughs> that's a very good question. So let's talk a little about what some of these weigh. This one had a max gross takeoff weight of 488,000 pounds. That's really heavy. This one, <laughs> okay, has a max yeah. gross takeoff of 477,000 pounds. Okay, so that's like 100 minivans. This one has a max gross takeoff weight of 174,000 pounds, which comes out to about, you know, 40 minivans. So it's quite a bit smaller than these two. So how do you get something that heavy to lift off the ground and fly? And now we have airplanes like the Airbus 380 that has a max gross weight takeoff weight of over a million pounds. So that's huge. That's the largest commercial airplane in the world flying right now. So how do you get all that weight off the ground? Well, in the 1700s, there was a guy by the name of Bernoulli who was a physicist who discovered as the speed of a fluid speeds up over a surface, the pressure it exerts on that surface is less. Okay, so we have this piece of paper right here. Notice that it's limp. So we have static pressure holding this piece of paper down. 
it's not doing anything. The air over it is not flowing at all. But if I simply take a hair dryer, now I'm not gonna put it on the bottom, I'm gonna put it on the top. Let's turn it off first and redo that. Okay, so you notice I'm not blowing off the bottom. Notice how the paper, as the air is increasing, speed over the top of the piece of paper, the pressure is less. So we have less pressure on the top, more pressure on the bottom, so we're creating lift. So on a 737 then, you can see that the wing and all these airplanes have a shape that we call camber, so it's a curved surface. So as we're going down the runway and the engines are producing thrust, we're increasing the air, run, airplane goes down the runway, the air on top of the wing starts to go faster than the air on the bottom of the wing, so therefore we start to create lift, and that's how we can get this thing that weighs 174,000 pounds off the ground. So that's how lift is generated in an airplane, okay? You can see in the B-52 how massive the wings were because this was designed as a high-level bomber. So if this thing would fly at 50,000 feet to drop its payload. So for it to generate all the lift it needed, it needed very big wings on it. Versus the B-1, which was designed as a supersonic low-level bomber, okay, they needed to lift at low speed so the wings would come forward. When they picked up speed and when they were flying low level of the ground, they needed to cut down the drag so the wings would sweep back because it was flying so fast, it would still generate enough lift at a low level to keep it off the ground. With even that much less wing, it would we, still Even with that much less lift. wing on there. So you're using air. Yes, you are. That's amazing. That's just a really cool, a cool way to understand our, our world right. around us and how air moves in airflow. And that's, wow. Now, one <laughs> unique question I always get about airplanes, and especially on the 737, why are these goofy things in the tips? What do they do? Okay. Back in the 90s, they started what they would call the blended winglets on the airplane. And now remember I talked about a high pressure and a low pressure. So we have a low pressure on top of the wing and a high pressure on the bottom of the wing. Well, air high pressure likes to go to low pressure. Okay, so just like if you blow up a balloon, that's high pressure, you release it, that blue air is gonna escape from the balloon to the lower pressure around you. What these winglets do is stop that air from going from a low pressure, I'm sorry, a high pressure on the bottom to the low pressure on top. Because that creates what we call wake take vortices, which actually increase the drag on the airplane. Because okay. then you have air, when it, if it comes up and over, you have air pushing down, Correct. where you actually want your lift right. to pull it up. Okay. And in the last couple of years, okay, they found out that what they call these scimitars actually help reduce that drag. If you give me a piece of paper, I can kind of draw this out for you. Just a blank piece of paper. Here, just okay. use that one. <laughs> so if I look at the wing, okay, so that would be the wing either looking from in front of the airplane or back of the airplane. Okay, if we take the lift curve of the wing, Because of those weak turf vortices, the lift is less at the wingtips. So what this, those do, those winglets do, make this lift more even across the wing. So rather than decreasing at the wingtips, here and here, it becomes more even you can see more of a straight line producing more lift on the wing. So that's why those are there. I had actually had that question too. 
<laughs> you just answered that for me. That absolutely makes sense because you want your lift to be even, right? provide more lift, then you're using less fuel, right? <laughs> and that, everything in the airline industry is fuel because fuel is one of our biggest costs. Right. So anything to reduce drag, to decrease fuel usage, wow. they, we look at very seriously. That's really cool. Thank you for explaining that. And for you kids at home, if you want to do this experiment that he did, this is two blocks, but you could use cereal boxes or whatever to set a piece of paper up and tape it to it and get your parents to use a blow dryer and help you do that. And you can try that at home. <laughs> Thanks. That was a great experiment. So we're going to do our craft in your, in your kit, you have this sheet right here, and we're just going to make a wing and just kind of look at what what Captain Kruger's talking about. So you're gonna cut out your pattern and I'll just do that real quick here off the paper. So in your kit, you have your piece of paper, you have um, your meat tray, which is this white tray, although ours are brand new and not been used yet, but you can always recycle one when your parents buy meat like hamburger or steaks or chicken or whatever, they usually come in these trays and you can wash them, make sure you wash them really well. <laughs> have a parent help you and see how it's just a tray. You could also use a styrofoam plate, any sort of a lightweight material like this. We liked these because it actually does the wing. What did you call that again? This, the part that goes up? Well, the winglets. The winglets. These are kind of built in with our patterns. So that way it makes it a little bit easier for you. So you need to lay your pattern so that those winglets are right on the edge, but not in two dimensions. We only want them in the one dimension. So you need to not go, if you go too far this way, do you see how it curves in on both this side and that side? So pull it back until it's right there. So we only have the winglets on the one side. <laughs> and then I have a marker. I'm just gonna draw it out and then cut it out. So just trace your pattern right on it. And then you'll see we did give you the center point and where to put the paper clip later. And in your kit, you also have two paper clips because we're finding that you needed a little more weight. But we're gonna experiment a little bit here and then we'll see what happens. <laughs> so I'm just gonna cut mine out. Not always the easiest thing to cut, but you can get it. And you can always come back and trim it up a little. I really like that you brought your models. I think that's really neat and a great way to show how, this is really interesting to me that those wings move to do different it things. It was one of the very few airplanes <laughs> that had swept wings. The only other one in, the, in a combat airplane was the F-14. And I'm sure if you ask your parents about Top Gun, the movie, they'll remember that. And that was a <laughs> big star go. of that movie <laughs> back in the 80s. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I have this cut out now. So we have a basic. Does that look like, what do you think? It, it like resembles a wing. a wing, doesn't it? Now we need to put a little weight on it to make it fly. And, and Captain Kruger has one already to play with too. So we're gonna put this in the center here and put some weight on it and see what happens. Now we're gonna fly it like this, right? Give it a try. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, Oops. I did not fly that good. <laughs> oh, okay. mine flipped over. Okay, so. Let me give it a try here. Yep, you try it. Okay, you probably didn't capture the whole thing on camera, but when Captain Kruger flew it, it glided beautifully. Okay, one thing. <laughs> Let me go get it. Right. <laughs> okay, and mm -hmm. you can talk about why. Okay, now a flying wing, and the reason you don't see a lot of flying wings, because it's extremely unstable on there. So that's why each of these airplanes have a tail, because as you saw when Michelle threw it, it wanted to pitch up or wanted to pitch down, okay? So what the tail does on each of these airplanes, right, is help balance that force out. So if the airplane wants to pitch up, this provides a force to pitch it down and vice versa. So that's why you don't see a lot of flying wings, even though they're very efficient, they're extremely unstable. 
without the rest of it. Without the rest of it. I'm pretty sure in our next lesson with you, we're going to work on trying a little experiment Try a little with that. Trying to get that a little bit more stable. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us today. Oh, one more thing I wanted to say. This. The wing actually has a shape to it. He talked about that. You can take sandpaper and shape this if you'd like. And on your paper, there is a picture of how to do it. So I'm not gonna take the time today, but you can make your wing shaped like a real airplane wing. It's a little bit higher um, in the front, a right, little front of the center, camber. the camber, okay? That's the camber of the shape of the wing. So you can take some sandpaper at home and sand a little off the front like this, you would just kind of work on it. Can you see it's already smoothing it down, which will make it fly a lot better. And then in the back, you want to take it off in a longer space than in the front, so it's a little more narrower in the right. back. So you can spend some time on that and experiment with it. See, and if you look at these three <laughs> airplanes, okay, notice how much we talk, Michelle talked about the shape, and we call that the camber, the thickness of the wing. Okay, because the B-52 is carrying a high load at a high altitude, it had a lot of camber to produce all the lift. Yeah. If you look at this one, you can see it's a much skinnier wing. Okay? And yeah. then finally the B1 would probably have been the skinniest wing at all. Of all of those. Right. Generally, the, the fatter the wing, okay, the more lift it will produce, the more camber it has, but also with that you pay a price of drag. So now it becomes a balance of what you're trying to achieve. High altitude, right? Big fat wing, a lot of lift. Low altitude, super fast, right? So I want a much more streamlined wing. That makes sense. So you can experiment with yours at home and there should be enough space left on your tray to cut out another one if you wanna try it with that too. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Captain Kruger, for explaining you're very flight. Welcome. And he'll be back for one more episode of Flight. So we'll see you soon. Thanks.